A strange weather pattern will be coming to the United States over the next several days, and this is going to bring a completely different set of temperatures across the country with much cooler weather across a very large chunk of the United States. In addition to this, we are about to see a massive explosion in tropical activity across the Atlantic Ocean, the Caribbean Sea, and perhaps the Gulf of Mexico, where several tropical storms and or hurricanes will be possible in the month of September. In addition to that, we are dealing with one more threat of severe weather as as we go into tomorrow across the Northeast and even in the Mid-Atlantic region. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about all the weather that's going to be happening over the next couple of weeks. We are going to begin with what's happening across the United States right now, and I want to point out something right off the bat to you, and it's this right here, just off the coast of Louisiana and Texas. You might be thinking, this kind of looks like it's spinning a little bit. Well, it is. It actually is an area of development. We could see a tropical depression or even a low-end tropical storm storm form within the next couple of days just off the coast of Louisiana. I'll show you more of what that looks like in a second. More than anything, though, this is just bringing a lot of rainfall right along the immediate coastline right now, so on and off showers and thunderstorms will be possible over the next few days. This right here is just one telltale sign that the tropics are definitely starting to heat up. We also have a lot of thunderstorm activity just kind of all over the place today across the Caribbean Sea. This isn't super unusual for this time of the year, just something to kind of keep in mind. There's a lot of moisture out there. And then also over in the East Coast, We've had some pop-up showers and thunderstorms today. We've even had some storms firing up across parts of the Ohio Valley. There has been a low-end threat for severe weather today from Michigan back into parts of Missouri, but overall, it's just going to be sporadic hail and wind and maybe a brief tornado somewhere in the thumb of Michigan. And then back over in the Northern Plains and anywhere back over really to the west of the Rocky Mountains, things are definitely quieting down quite a bit. There's really nothing over there. It's very dry, pretty warm overall still, but I do think we're going to be dealing with cooler weather over the next several days as a more stalled out weather pattern is going to be impacting a large chunk of the Southern Plains and even back through the Ohio Valley and Northeast. Now, I am going to talk more about the mainland of the United States in just a moment, and I'm also going to talk more about the tropics later in the forecast. I just want to give you a preview to what we're going to be talking about later. It's pretty crazy. We have three areas of development right now across the Atlantic Ocean, one of which just got issued at 2 o'clock today, literally only a few hours ago, over in the Gulf of Mexico, and this could become a tropical storm. And then back over here in the western Atlantic, Ocean. This is an area of development that we are watching for extremely closely because if this does go in the Caribbean Sea and it does organize, we could see this become a rather significant tropical storm or hurricane as it moves into the Caribbean Sea and then eventually it could go into the Gulf of Mexico. And then we have another tropical wave just off the coast of Africa that we will be watching for as well. That is a low chance of development. Now for tomorrow, we do have a risk for severe weather. We have a little marginal threat back over in the upper Midwest. We have a slight risk as well that goes goes across parts of West Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, New York, and a marginal threat that goes all the way back down into the Ohio Valley. The main concern for tomorrow will be wind and hail, but I would not rule out an isolated tornado somewhere in maybe central Pennsylvania. There is no tornado risk outlined right now from the Storm Prediction Center, but I wouldn't be surprised if they add one in the next outlook. Now, the reason why I mentioned that there could be an isolated tornado tomorrow is that there will be just enough wind shear, especially across Pennsylvania and perhaps even back into parts of New York and maybe even western Maryland where we could see a spin-up or two somewhere in those areas. But overall, it's a very low risk. It would predominantly just be during the early to mid-afternoon hours, and then we're kind of done with it as we go later into the afternoon and into the early evening. Here's what the timing looks like for tomorrow. Storms will be out there in the late morning and early afternoon, mostly across Ohio and Kentucky, and then also western Pennsylvania. The severe weather threat, though, really ramps up around 1 to 2 o'clock, and this is where we're watching for sporadic hail and wind. And then as we get closer to 3, 4, 5 o'clock, these storms continue to push east. The one limiting factor to the tornado threat for tomorrow will be that this is more of a linear line of storms and it's not going to be very organized. So there are some problems when it even comes to a tornado threat, but if any storm can kind of stay a little bit more discreet, I definitely could see there being an isolated tornado. And then as we go later into the evening, storms move across parts of Virginia before dying out as they approach the Appalachian Mountains. And then as we go into the overnight hours, perhaps some storms still remaining, but I don't expect any severe weather beyond there. Now let's talk more about the weather pattern that will be impacting the United States over the the next week or so and to look at that we're going to look at the jet stream gives you an idea of what's happening in the upper levels which usually does translate to the ground level this is what we're looking at for the next few days so again we're gonna have a ridge that's just going to build across the rocky mountains and what this is essentially going to do is just build a big heat dome across the western tier of the united states especially west of the rocky mountains we're at least not going to see nearly as much heat build in the southern plains as we have for the last several weeks we are actually going to see a lot more rain in texas and oklahoma 
Oklahoma, which is going to lead to cooler temperatures. Now, back over in the northeast United States and back into Canada, we still have a relatively strong trough that'll be up there. That's not going to really move very fast, but once it moves out, we are going to start to see that ridge just kind of weaken. We're going to have a more zonal flow across the United States, and what this zonal flow is going to do is allow for a lot more of just a sporadic sort of weather pattern, where we're not looking at any organized upper-level features that are going to bring, you know, major severe weather events, or even in some situations, major heat waves. We don't really have anything that indicates that as we go into next week. And then once we go beyond Thursday, Friday, and even Saturday of next week, things become relatively uncertain. The European model indicates that we could get a trough that really digs down into the United States. And if we do get a tropical system into the Gulf of Mexico, which is what the European model thinks right now, we could see that get attracted to that jet stream or even get repelled. And it could sit somewhere like something like Debbie, where it kind of sat for a while would definitely not be impossible with something like that. But again, we don't really know what's going to happen since it's just so far out. So to put this into more simplistic terms, as we go into tomorrow, we're going to continue to see showers and thunderstorms from Texas all the way back through the Northeast. Once we go into Sunday into Monday, we're going to have a high pressure system at the surface level really build across the Midwest. And that's going to keep things dry and warm for probably several days on end back over in the Midwest while it's going to stay active in the Southern Plains in the Southeast. Once we go into Wednesday into Thursday, we're going to continue to watch just for an active weather pattern near the Gulf Coast and in the Mid-Atlantic. We're going to see a trough more than likely sometime late next week back up in Canada. Look at this purple stuff, by the way. We are now going into early September. Got a little sign maybe of a mix of rain and snow in Canada. We're not too far from that. Once we go later into the week, though, again, things become more uncertain. But as of right now, no organized severe weather events beyond tomorrow are in the forecast. And look at that little thing down there at the bottom of your screen. That right there could be our next hurricane here in the Atlantic Ocean as we go into around September 9th, which is still pretty far out from now. This is what we're dealing with just off the coast of Texas and Louisiana right now. This little spinning low pressure system is trying to develop back over just southeast of Houston. And over the next 48 hours, the HRRR model actually does have this developing into a little bit more of a maybe a tropical depression just offshore and might even get to a tropical storm level if it stays offshore enough. Right now, it just looks to be more of a rain threat, though, maybe even an isolated tornado risk right along the Louisiana coast. So something to watch for. But more than anything, flooding is the biggest concern right now on the immediate coastline from just east of Houston back into parts of southern and southeastern Louisiana, where some areas could pick up several inches of rain before that event is all said and done. But as of right now, not expected to become a hurricane. This is the latest National Hurricane Center outlook. As of this afternoon, we have three areas of development in the Atlantic Ocean, and this is giving you a pretty good indication that the tropics are definitely heating up. I'm going to go right to left just to begin off with this. I'm going to kind of show you what I think is concerning. Right now, I don't think this tropical wave is much of a concern for the United States. I don't expect this to really even go towards the United States, at least for now. It has a low chance of development, and it'll probably end up curving back out to sea where the Bermuda High is going to be sitting off to its north. So more than likely, this is not really much of a concern for the United States. What I think is a bigger concern, and it could be a huge concern for the United States, depending on what happens over the next few days, is this area of development right here. Now, in the short term, this is expected to become a tropical depression or storm near the Lesser Antilles. At least there's a medium confidence of that happening. So as of now, there's no like 99% chance that this is definitely happening, but there's about a 50-50 chance that we see development. In the case that this does develop, which is what we're going to be talking about, if it does develop, I think that this could easily become a major hurricane, and I'm not trying to say that to scare you, I just know that this environment here in the Atlantic Ocean, the Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico is extremely favorable for hurricanes right now, and it is a very favorable environment. We, have, we really haven't had anything in the Caribbean or Gulf of Mexico since either Debbie or Barrel, which Barrel, by the way, was back in June, so it's been a while since that was even here, so it's just really just an untapped environment right now in the, both the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico, and Debbie didn't really do much to really spur up the water or anything like that. But that is something we're going to talk about more in detail here in a second. The one system that's off the Texas and Louisiana coast, we just kind of talked about it. I would say it's a low concern right now. It's mostly just going to be a flooding threat, maybe some gusty winds, and it probably will be getting going probably as we go into early next week at the bare minimum. But overall, not really concerned about it other than just the rain potential with it. What I'm going to show you is the ensemble members on one of these ensemble runs, and I'm going to kind of give you an idea of where the uncertainty lies right now. So once we go into early next week, we are probably going to see some development out of this tropical system, or at least the tropical wave that we have right now. A good amount of ensembles on the GEFS are bringing this to at least a tropical storm or low-end hurricane. There are some that don't bring this to much of anything, so that's where the uncertainty lies right now. And then beyond that, it becomes even more uncertain. A lot of the ensemble members bring this thing into really different areas. One brings it back 
back over into the Southwest Gulf. We have a couple that bring it into the actual Gulf of Mexico. We have one that brings it back over just southeast of Florida, and then a couple other outliers that bring it towards either the east coast of the United States or just out to sea. That's where the uncertainty lies right now. Now, if we look at the EPS ensemble members, which are more of the European-based ensemble members, look at the certainty that this has right now and the bias it has. It's insane. Almost every one of these ensemble members brings this towards Florida or near the east coast of the United States or goes right into somewhere like Louisiana as a pretty much major hurricane. What I'm basically saying is that this is something that we are going to have to watch for very closely. There's no reason to panic right now. Just make sure that you are staying aware because we are going into September. It is the peak of hurricane season in September and even early October. We are going to see probably at least a couple of hurricanes over the next couple of months. Whether those impact the United States or not remains to be seen, but I do think that this tropical wave does have a high likelihood of doing something to the United States. Whether it's just a weak tropical storm or it's a major hurricane, we don't really know now. It's just something we're we'll going to be watching for very closely over the next several days. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.